Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well, staying cozy out there. Uh, what better way to talk about the fall anime 2023 season in uh, week three of the, <laughs> the winter season? Right, we are ranking the 39 new anime, not spin-offs or sequels or anything like that, that came out the fall season for my personal enjoyment. Full disclosure, I think there was a few Netflix series that I missed um, just from being busy and such, so I do apologize. Uh, we're going to do better the winter season. Number 39 is Butareba, a story of a man turned to a pig. I only got through the first episode of this one because, you know, it's all either the guy talking about, oh, am I a pig? Or him thinking really dirty thoughts about a, a teenage girl. I really hope these horny animal anime, just they just go away. Number 38 is a girl and her guard dog. Two reasons why this one was the second to last for me. One, there's a, about a 9 to 10 year age gap between the two characters. And she's a minor and he's 26. So yeah, there's that. The other reason is he's protected her since she was five. So he's known her for a very long time. And that's just, that's just wrong. Number 37 is Kingdoms of Ruin. The main character, angry teenage boy, very Aaron Yeager-like. Um, and people were afraid of him, right? He's a bit, big criminal. But the female characters are either sexually assaulted, decapitated, demoralized. Um, and there's just a few offensive stereotypes, so... Yeah, I, I really hated this one, and honestly, this would have been my least favorite if it wasn't for the really inappropriate uh, previous two. Number 36, MF Ghost. Racing show. There's no lot of racing in this first episode. Instead, you know what there is? A ton of butt shots of uh, another underage girl, which... Maybe they toned down after the first episode, but I couldn't get past. Also, have no nostalgia to Initial D, which is this is connected to. So there really wasn't anything grabbing. Five, a playthrough of a certain dude's VR MMO life. I don't play video games. Honestly, I don't even know what a VR MMO is. I, I assume it's like World of Warcraft or something like that. I don't know. Um, my question is, one, why play one of these online games by yourself? Thought this is. You know, for trying not to be a power fantasy series, you made all the weak stats like potion making and cooking and archery and such. You made it all work together where he does beat a very skilled player. So you became a power fantasy. 34, the demon sword master of Excalibur Academy. You know, at first I was like, okay, the stuff with the... The gods against each other in the the past, it seemed like interesting. But then when we got to the present, it was like, oh, you're just like so many other shows that I see nowadays. It's Demon Lord and a 10-year-old's body. Look how funny. He's a 10-year-old, but he's still horny. And these girls are a lot younger than he is, but also they're older than... He is uh, because he has the mind of a of an old, older man, but the body of a ten year old. Number thirty three: Vexations of a Shut In Princess. Initially had a funny premise, but the first episode was just so all over the place. The jokes they just weren't landing for me, and I just thought the world building was quite terrible too. The experience you and the inexperience me. I really didn't like the male character. He was a very nervous nerd type character that's also a bit perverted. Um, and I'm not in love with the idea of the female lead changing because of him rather than changing uh, just in the re relationship together. The female character wasn't bad though, uh, but not enough to have me continue the series for what I assume is just going to be a lot of just really tasteless uh, horny jokes. 31. Kami Arabi app. Get to the Battle Royale section of this before dropping it. Um, it's it's not really even just because the animation is god-awful, but I'm just not... 
I wasn't really feeling any of the characters. Number 30, my daughter left the nest and became an S rank adventurer. The second episode, just because the first episode did just a horrible job at telling me what the premise is even going to be. Then I saw her trying to get to uh, see her, her dad, but having adventure duties get in the way seemed to be the gimmick. Uh, there wasn't really anything else grabbed me. Like I just felt like the animation was cutting a lot of corners. The art style was dull. And I just thought the characters were fine, but not enough to get invested. Number 29, Paradox Live, the animation songs were good. You know, I just rather the characters not have trauma from this sci-fi element. And it just seemed like where it was going. It, it seemed like it was going to be a mess, but maybe you'll enjoy it from a good, bad perspective. I just wasn't feeling it. The 100 girlfriends who really, 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 really love you is number 28. This wasn't awful. But I'm not really a harem person. I don't, and especially the big thing was from the girl's perspective, to share one guy with 99 other girls, it just seemed like a bummer only for them. There was no downside to the guy. It was a parody. Uh, it was hard for me to get past even that. But I'll say like animation and the characters weren't bad. It's just mainly because of that and I don't like hair. 27, Ragna Crimson. The pacing of this ep first episode was terrible. Why was it 40 minutes? I mean, I don't dislike the two lead characters, but they aren't enough to have me continue this really edgelord fantasy series with just some of the ugliest color grading I've seen this season. Number 26, Berserk of Gluttony. Seasonal videos, the beginning of this year, and I was a little bit more open to these power fantasy series. Oh, but once you see at least five of them, you you just stop giving them chances after the first episode. This one just wasn't any different. Like this guy gets bullied to a comical a comical level, and then gets this skill where he probably will just be cool, and all the girls will like him um, for the rest of the series. Number twenty five, undead. Unlock. I gave this three episodes because everyone was saying it gets better. I, I just couldn't do it. Overall, the action's a lot of fun, and I like the female lead fine, um, but the I just really hate the male lead. Uh, his groping, it it's just way too much for me. Number 24, 16-bit sensation. This wasn't bad. I just don't have any context for this area of video games. Number 23, a returner's magic should be special. Not only was this episode really badly paced, the other reason I didn't get farther than episode one is because it's not really bad. It's just such a forgettable Magic Academy series, and we've gotten so many this year. Number 22, I shall survive using potions. Pretty generic, ugly-looking isekai world. Uh, the main character didn't really grab me. We can move. Number 21, Protocol Rain. I gave this three to four episodes, something like that. Um, because I was curious at what the character's decision he regretted in the past, but it just seems like it's going the generic sports drama route with not really too much engaging character. The other thing is, I feel like you at least need to have the sports element be pretty well animated, pretty hyped, and it was not. Number 20, Under Ninja. Say so yeah, I watched like maybe two episodes. It's a mess. Ugly art style. Uh, and, you know, I had a few laughs. 19, I'm giving the disgraced noble lady I rescued a crash course in naughtiness. Not about this series. Uh, it just seems like empty calories. That's what thoughts I've been getting a lot about this one. Um, you know, from the writing and the characters and the animation. Just fine. I, I needed it to give me a little bit more of a push in one of these fields. Though. Number 18, Stardust Telepath. I liked the lead character, but I was a bit annoyed by the second lead. She was just a little too positive and outgoing to me and the premise of the high school uh girls hanging out just it wasn't really grabbing me um but i didn't think it was bad number 17 the family circumstances of the irregular wit was not loving the the boob jokes in the, the beginning um but after a little bit i i did think the chemistry between the mother and daughter was sweet um if i ever have the time and just have just feel like I don't want to watch something heavy. 
I could see myself continuing this series, but it wasn't like an immediate watch. Number 16, Kawagoe Boys Sing. Okay, so the first episode is awful. Uh, and the only reason I watched the next episode is because I was in choir in high school and I just wanted to see a choir anime. And by the second episode, they were developing some of the choir boys and I think they're very likable. Uh, I still don't like the conductor, but he could grow on me, maybe. Uh, it just wasn't something I, I wanted to watch uh, week to week because I got pretty busy. But I'll definitely finish it at some point. Number 15, Shy. The thing about this was pretty solid. Uh, great production values, the dramas, you know, pretty well written. And you want to see the main characters succeed. And she's just very likable. Two reasons I don't think I'm going to continue this is because, one, there's a lot of series I just want to watch in my lifetimes. And I didn't think this was that good that I wanted to continue continue it but the second reason is the main reason is because i'm just really tapped out on superhero stories right now number 14 pluto wait, 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 wait. okay uh, it's not because of the quality it, it's a phenomenal series i love the themes of humanity um arts memories uh war racism um all of just this really engaging sci-fi murder mystery with some great production values, all right? Finished the first four episodes yet, okay? I've been watching it with a group of friends. We were having a great time. Um, but, you know, they're long episodes. Number 13, Shangri-La Frontier. This isn't great. Like, the art style and storytelling are, you know, basic. Uh, and I'll say it even could be paced a bit better. And back to it is it's got such a simple Balshone premise with at least enough laughs and action that i'll say like i enjoy it enough number 12 i'm in love with the villain if i was pretty objective this would probably be a lot lower um if i finished a lot of these because the the two weeds were really the only thing i liked about this uh there's some pretty poor storylines uh some poor production value god damn it did i enjoy the jokes i was also attracted to the mean men and uh, women in shows I watched. So this humor really worked for me. And, you know, I liked the two leads. So it was, it was good enough for me to continue. Even Tear Moon Empire. I, I thought the jokes were pretty funny in this. Actually, there was a couple more jokes I preferred than I'm in love with the, the villainous. And that's why it's a, above this. And, yeah, I, I, I think the animation is also pretty poor in this. But there's... Also, character decisions that are are pretty bad. These adults being the bodies of kids, and they're attracted to a kid, and they also mention that as multiple times as a joke, but are still romantically interested anyway. Can we just stop that that trope? Let's stop being weird. Here, free idea. Take this. Uh, let's have a thirty-year-old, okay, go into the body of a twenty-something-year-old, and they can be attracted to another twenty-something year old but have the mind of a 30 something year old well, why don't we do something like that 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 could work We're in the top 10 number 10 bull buster say the drama would have been better probably in the second season i just feel like we didn't have as much time to get to know all these different characters that are introduced or i feel like even a second core i feel like would have been better but i at least thought the workplace comedy element with Next, number nine, Ron Komunahashi's Forbidden Deduction. Very much like the last pick, this series had fine production values, and I'll say the story itself probably could have been better written and paced with what the initial draw of it was of these um, episodic mysteries. But instead of a lot of these being one episode mysteries, you should have had them in arcs. Um, but I'll say I enjoy the two leads enough that I'm actually pretty excited for a second season. And Ron, whew, whew, you can't you can't hide the, that him in the the homeless looking look. No, you can't. He's hot. Number eight, Miki and Dolly. Series goes places that you won't expect by watching just the first episode. I'm so shocked the team balanced the thriller elements and the comedy elements biggest laughs i had were not just from this particular season but all of 20, 
23 in general. Um, my only really big thing is that I didn't love the climax of the story. Um, I like the ending, though. And I, I just thought those were pretty stacked seasons. That's why it's number eight. Number seven, Overtake. It's a really good sports drama. I, I like the two lead characters. I mean, it's got some great production values and um, the racing so much better than MF Ghost. Uh, I just think it doesn't really go further than just being a really solid sports drama. Like, it doesn't really take turns I wasn't expecting. Um, and I just personally enjoy these other six. Number six, Firefighter Daigo, Rescuer in Orange. You know, it's really nice just to see an anime about firefighters in the shonen format. That isn't in any magical way like a fire force or something like that. I like the three lead characters. I'm glad there's two cores of this. And I think the tensions build up really well on each of these missions. We're in the top five now. Number five, Scott Pilgrim takes off. So I'm a big fan of the Scott Pilgrim manga and uh, movie as well. And I would have been perfectly fine if they just adapted the original, you know, manga. But... I really appreciate they went a different route and giving us not only just more time with all these characters, but also giving depth to all of them that we haven't seen um, from other uh, inter iterations. For me, it was definitely a Ramona. Uh, I really enjoyed her getting closure with each one of her exes instead of fighting them. I thought that was just a really great take. And I think, you know, Science Saru really ca captured the art style of the comic really well. Um, my really only two big things of why it isn't higher is because it wasn't as funny as the movie or the comic, but maybe I need to revisit the both of them because maybe the comic isn't as good as I think it is. The second reason is I, I think the Japanese uh, dub is really good. But the original English sub, I could tell a lot of the voice actors uh, haven't voice acted before. All that being said, though, I'm just really appreciative that this exists and to add to the story of number four, my new boss is goofiness. Yes, the jokes are repetitive. I understand. And I, I don't even know if the jokes would even change or the, the characters that much from a season two. But I just enjoyed how sweet it was, how it's just these four adult men are supporting each other through some workplace trauma and yeah it made me happy each week number three apothecary diaries the thing i didn't like about this series is the miss most of the mysteries i didn't think were well written and solved really quickly and this is a mystery series um, it was definitely giving me Ron Kamenohashi's vibe with that same negative to it. The reason I don't really care that the mysteries weren't that well written is because the characters are really well written. I think it's got some gorgeous animation, um, very ex expressive like art style. Um, the, the music's gorgeous. We get to see this different side of ancient China where we don't really get to see a lot in anime. So yeah, I'm glad this is still going now. Uh, and I think everyone should watch it. Number two, Freyren, Beyond Journey's End. Surprised a lot of people because this is a lot of people's favorite. And, you know, I understand why. I think, you know, the writing, the art style, the characters, everything about this is great. And the main reason that this isn't number one for me is just because my number one, I haven't seen anyone talk about. And everyone's talking about this series. So do I really need to tell you it's great? I mean, you're probably already watching it. Number one. Yuzuki Family's Four Sons. One series I'll explain the premise for, since again, no one's seen this show. So the premise of this is the story follows four brothers living together after the death of their parents. That's it. Honestly, this isn't going to be your favorite show this year, you know? It's a slice of life, and for some reason you all hate slice of life. That's such a terrible take, you know? Grow up, watch some slice of life, come on. <laughs> thing for me is I just think the character writing hit me the most of uh, this season. I think there's just so many lovable characters in this. Um, the brothers taking care of one another. You know, there's regret in the series. There's growing up. There's um, trauma and a lot of other topics that I, I think were really well done. And I'm really sad that this is 
probably not going to get a second season because, like I said, I really haven't seen anyone talk about it. But if you respect any of my opinions on this channel, then I highly recommend you watch the Yuzuki family's Four Sons on Crunchyroll. Give it a watch, please. Everyone, that's it for me. Look forward to my winter anime 2024 ranking as well as my 2023 animation in review at the sometime at the end of this month. Oh. <laughs>